Hi guys, welcome to the last video of lithium battery manufacturing series. Before we proceed, I am happy to tell you that recently I have launched a fiction named The Story of a Failure. Well, this fiction is based on a motorsport story. An engineer named Dastan becomes ambitious for a motorsport competition and has to work against all the odds. It's interesting to see, despite of failing in everything, what Dastan does so that he can win the competition. Well, I hope you will read the roller coaster life of an engineer and figure out yourself if he wins or fails. Let's start the video. Earlier we have seen how different types of cells are fabricated and assembled. So whether we are constructing a pouch or a cylindrical or a prismatic cell, the next step involves filling the cell with electrolyte. At this point, the cell is completely dry. The package is sealed except for a small opening which is often sealed by laser welding but later on. For a pouch cell, it could be sealed by heating some materials and effectively making a hot glue connection. But after this initial sealing process, they still leave a small opening through which they can insert the electrolyte. This is done in a very interesting way. The cell is first subjected to a vacuum through this small opening which removes most of the air from the inside of the cell, from the pores, in the porous electrode structure. And then a small amount of electrolyte is injected into the cell and then the vacuum is released so that the atmospheric pressure forces the electrolyte into the cell, into those small pores and small pores opening. This can be done multiple times so that the electrode porous structure is filled as full as possible with the electrolyte. It's interesting that even at this point, the cell may not be completely wet with the electrolyte material and it may take several charge or discharge cycles for that to happen. And it's not uncommon to see the first several cycles of a new brand lithium ion cell appears to increase in capacity as these electrodes makes its way into all the pores and then allows the lithium ion to flow to all of the solid active material. And then after these initial cycles where the capacity appears to be going up, then it starts to go down as the cell ages. In any cases, after we have filled these cells with as much electrolyte as we are able to, we seal the remaining opening using a laser weld or some kind of very high capacity. The electrolyte fill operation must be done in an environment known as a dry room. A dry room uses a very high capacity dehumidifier to remove as much moisture from the atmosphere as possible. And this is really important because the electrolytes used in lithium ion battery cells often have salts that react chemically with water. So any moisture in the electrolyte will cause the electrolyte to decompose and this can cause them to emit toxic gases and furthermore lithium hexafluorophosphate or LiPF6 which is one of the most commonly used electrolyte salts reacts with water and forms toxic hydrofluoric acid when it does and this hydrofluoric acid can cause the electrode materials to dissolve or disintegrate inside the cell over time which leads to capacity loss. So we highly desire to avoid that or at least to minimize that and we do so by injecting the electrolyte into the cell inside of a dry room environment. So at this point the cell is completely constructed and some remaining tasks might include things like printing a cell serial number on the cell and maybe some other identifying information on the packaging. But now the cell is ready for its very first charge. Before we discuss this charging process, it's important to talk a little bit about some things that's known as the solid electrolyte interface layer in a lithium ion battery cell, otherwise known as SEI. It turns out that when lithium intercalates into graphite in the negative electrode, the lithium graphite reacts with solvent in the electrolyte and forms this solid electrolyte interface layer, which is a film coating of the particle of the negative electrode. This process of SEI formation and growth consumes lithium, so it results in capacity loss. The film 
also impedes ions lithium ions that want to travel from the electrolyte into the electrode and vice versa which results in a higher resistance for this cell and therefore results in a power loss and neither of these is desirable but on the other hand this SEI layer also turns out to stabilize the graphite against further reaction of the solvent which is a positive feature so it tends to be a self-limiting reaction when the lithium ion battery cells are assembled they are done so in a fully discharged state at zero volts all of the lithium begins in the positive electrode the negative electrode is pure graphite and no lithium in it whatsoever so at the beginning at point of the manufacturing process no aci has formed but when we build this battery cell we must put it through at least one precisely controlled charging process and during this first charging process the graphite is lithiated for the first time and this cause this chemical reaction that forms the aci layer and because of this formation of an aci layer the first charging process is called the formation process this sei layer has to be as thin as possible because we don't want to have excessive capacity loss we want it to be as uniform in thickness as possible so it doesn't easily break down at a later point in time and this is most easily achieved if you form this layer slowly so if you form the layer by charging this cell very slowly for its very first time and then after that it may turn out to be valuable to gently charge and discharge otherwise known as a cycle the battery cell undergoes few cycles to stabilize the sei layer before the cell is delivered to the consumer if the formation process is badly done then this sei layer will be thick and non uniform and it may be brittle and it may easily break down as the battery cell is being operated in the consumer application anytime the sei layer breaks down it exposes more graphite to the solvent and at that point the solvent will react to the graphite and form additional sei product which will reduce capacity and increase resistance so good battery cells are formed to have a formation cycle that produces a good sei layer and the difference between a good battery cell and a bad battery cell might be your manufacturing age when you are trying to market yourself to the consumer and because of that the formation processes used by different manufacturers are proprietary they are trade secrets most likely the manufacturer does not do a normal constant current constant voltage charge and the processes used may take several days or even several weeks and may include steps that hold the cell voltage constant for a period of time at different voltage levels they may rest these cells at different open circuit conditions for different period of time at different temperatures and so forth the way the cell is manufactured has a critical influence on how long that cell will last in the application and so having tight controls on the manufacturing step is very important to be able to create the best cell possible during this formation process cell performance data are gathered and recorded in order to be able to perform some quality analysis during formation a cell has a high self discharge rate that points to some manufacturing defect that cell will be recycled it will not be sold to the consumer if the cell has a capacity that's very different from what's expected or has impedance that's higher than what's expected that could indicate that there is a manufacturing process that's not under control and that will lead to a lot of creative detective work to find and correct the process that is causing this problem many times even when cells do have parameters that fall within the desired tolerance band the cells that come out of production are sorted into different lots according to their capacity and resistance so that different lots of cells can be matched to each other for certain applications that require all of its cells to have very close capacities or resistance and so forth and this process is called matching or sometimes binding as you put cells in different binds so that the cells could be used together in this type of high specification environment 
all of this testing is done inside the manufacturing facility including other quality control measures and we strongly desire that all of the manufacturing defects are identified either before or during formation and not after formation certainly not after the battery cells have been sold to the consumer and battery packs have been assembled and it's in some product so in order to avoid a low yield it's important to enforce tight tolerances and strict process control. We need to avoid contamination of the raw materials. We need to avoid physical damage. We need to avoid things like burrs on the sharp edges, on the electrodes, because all of these are extremely dangerous and can cause serious problems when the cell is in operation. In order to reduce contaminations, cells are normally manufactured in a clean room conditions, similar to what is used when manufacturing semiconductor parts. Here our lithium ion battery manufacturing series has been end. In the playlist there are two more videos. These videos are related what happens after the use of lithium ion battery. I hope you found all these videos very informative and useful. See you soon.